Hey, this is devotional number four on leadership in Jesus. I want to pick up where I left off from Philippians chapter two. After we see the example of servanthood in Jesus, it has this amazing concluding remark about what God the Father thinks of his son when he becomes a servant and gives his life for us as his final act of servant. It says this, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You see, God exalts servants, not tyrants and control freaks. The more you try to control your leadership, the more you try to control people, the more you try to control circumstances, the less pleased and favored are you with God. God exalts people who serve and humble themselves. You see, becoming a servant leader has this understanding, is that people don't serve leaders, leaders serve people. We always think that, well, people ought to follow me because I'm the leader. People follow leaders because they see that the leader has a right heart, a right vision, and a right motivation. Here are some practical ways you as a leader can serve people. You have to lead, but leadership can be service to others. Let me give you six points on how to lead as a servant. First of all, serve people as a leader by giving them a clear vision. If your vision isn't clear, people can't follow you. You're not serving them well as a leader without clear vision. Make sure you can People can understand what that vision is, and it's clear to them. Second, communicate clearly the vision and what you're expecting people to do. Don't leave it up to their imagination. Don't make it vague or uh, un undetermined. Make, and make your communication clear about what it is you're calling people to do. Third, you can lead and serve people by listening to them. You know, listening is a powerful gift that you give to people. A lot of times as leaders, we go into a conversation thinking, well, I'm going to listen to what you say, but most of all, I can't wait to tell you what I want you to do or what I want you to hear from me. If we take the time to listen to people's hearts, what's going on inside of them, and they feel cared for and listened to, they will happily follow you. Fourth, you can lead people and serve them by releasing them into their full potential. You know, leaders have vision, they have things they want to get done, and sometimes what is on our people's heart doesn't quite line up with that. Well, find out what's in their heart and release them to fulfill what God has called them to do. They might find out, after all, it really will fit into your vision, the church's vision, and will become a great ally with their full participation. You can serve and lead by serving the interest of others and not only your own. We can get so fixated on what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, that we leave, lose sight of what other people need. Great leaders serve others. They don't just serve their own interest. And lastly, you can lead and serve by caring for the welfare of people. Leaders are around. God raises up leaders to make sure people are cared for, that their welfare is being watched after. So as you lead people, yes, it's about vision. Yes, it's about taking more ground. Yes, it's about advancing the kingdom. But it's also about how are the sheep doing? How are the people faring under your leadership? 